It's been a long time coming. The Peasant Rock, I'm finally doing this for you. And no, I'm not fooling. Welcome back to how strong was a Pokemon in-game. Although this time, I'm giving it a fresh coat of paint for the name. Yes, this series was similar in concepts to False Swipes, who was actually in the first episode of this series on my channel. But I will say, the name was just a little too similar. Since you guys like it when I use the words like weakest or strongest, I decided to roll with that. Anyhow, we'll be looking at how strong Electrode was in every game that it's ever appeared in. Before we get into how strong Electrode was though, let me remind you guys on how I will be analyzing it in the games first. I will be talking how well Electrode does in important battles, such as the rival, evil teams, gym leaders, etc., along with the moves it gets and the game availability. If you guys enjoyed this series and want more of it, leave a like down below and comment which Pokemon you would like to see next. With that said, let's get right into the video. Going back to Generation 1, you can obtain Electrode on Route 10 after beating Misty. Finding Electrode should be fairly easy with its 45% encounter rate, but making this Pokemon work is a fairly big issue. After beating Misty, you actually have fairly bad matchups against the rest of the gym leaders, seeing as you fight three whose teams resist your electric attacks in your next six, one of them being Giovanni, who's immune. If that wasn't bad enough, most of the game from here, you also struggle in the Elite Four pretty badly, with your only good matchups being versus Lorelei, who may as well be a Water Type E4 member in this gen. And then to an extent, it's helpful versus Blue, seeing as he has at least one Water Type, whether Blastoise or Gyarados, on top of his Pidgeot. If this wasn't bad enough, the only way you can even use electric attacks against any of those opponents is through TMs, which are Thunderbolt and Thunder. So you'll either need to get Thunder from the Power Plant, or save your Thunderbolt TM from after beating Lieutenant Surge in order to teach it to Voltorb slash Electrode. Overall, Kanto isn't very kind to Electrode. On to Generation 2, you can find Electrode in the Rocket Hideout at level 23 in Mahogany Town as a static encounter. Electrode faces many of the same issues it has in Generation 1, but to a far worse degree. You can only get Thunder and Zap Cannon for TMs in these games, with Zap Cannon being extremely inaccurate. Your only realistic way to use Electrode would be obtaining Thunder from the game corner in Goldenrod for 5,500 coins. If you're playing Crystal, you have the Move Tutor route at the game corner for Thunderbolt at least. However, the issue here would be you can't access that until you beat Lance. So that doesn't really help with our cause, and it's not really worth waiting just to save 1,500 coins. Electrode has a lot of trouble though, between the fact that Claire has a team of dragons, and while most of the Elite Four it has a neutral matchup against, you do still struggle when moving on to Kanto in your post-game adventures. At least you'll have a good time against Lance's team of Dragonite and three Flying-type Pokemon, as well as against Misty, since you'll have Electrode to fight her this time around. But once again, you'll want to stay away from Electrode. Now, we're on Generation 3, where this time around, Electrode is actually not a bad option. You gain access to Electrode and Voltorb in New Mauville after beating Norman, which means you'll actually have it for all the bosses you'd match up well against. To reach New Mauville, you'll need a Pokemon that can learn Surf, and when you reach there, you'll catch either Voltorb between levels 22 to 26, or Electrode at level 26. And in these games, it'll come with Spark as an actual stab option. This means not needing to go out of your way to get TMs to handle bosses like Winona or Wallace, and one down the road. But luckily for you, Watson will give you Thunderbolt after you complete the new Mauville quest. With Electrode, you'll have a great matchup against both Winona's gym, alongside Wallace or Wan's gym. And you'll even do fairly well with other bosses as well. If you're playing Sapphire or Emerald, you'll match up fairly well against Team Aqua. But even if you're fighting Team Magma, it'll at least handle the Zubat evolution line. Electrode may not be as useful in the Elite Four, however, it'll at least be handy for Glacia since half her team consists of Celio and Walrein, so it will still be worth using for those matchups. Fire Red and Leaf Green I'll keep brief since we already covered Red, Blue, and Yellow. However, the one change that happens here, unlike in those games, would be you at least having Spark if you leveled up to 21. Though, it won't really help you out, seeing as you'll be going through Rock Tunnel and a couple routes in order to reach Vermilion City anyway. So, that shouldn't impact anything substantial for your usage of this Pokemon in Kanto, since you'll get Thunderbolt not long after getting Spark, if you even choose to level up Voltorb for this portion of your journey. Since you can't normally obtain Voltorb in Diamond, Pearl, or Platinum, Let's skip to Heart Gold and Soul Silver. In Heart Gold and Soul Silver, you can encounter Electrode again in Mahogany Hideout, which you'll find at level 23. By this point, you'll have Spark as your offensive electric option. However, it won't really matter much, as just like in Gold, Silver, and Crystal, you won't have much use for Electrode in the Johto portion of your adventure. 
you'll have a fairly good matchup against Will, since half of his team is weak to Electric. But other than that, you'll have pretty average matchups until the fight against Lance, who has half his team weak to Electric as well. Now, to the Kanto portion of your journey, where just like in Gold, Silver, and Crystal, you'll really only see much use with this against Misty, as it struggles against a lot of bosses like Brock, Giovanni, Erica, etc. But at the very least, maybe you can make Mirror Coat work if you grind it to level 47 against some gym leaders who may use special attackers like Erica. Electrode at the very least seems to be a fair bit better in these games, seeing as you at least have a far easier time obtaining electric type moves. However, it still sadly is fairly hard to use for many matchups due to the type sub specific opponents by that portion of the game. Now going into Generation 5, you can unlock Voltorb through the Dream World's Icy Cave biome as soon as you get your Sea Gear. Seeing as the servers are shut down for this, I will go into instead how Electro would have done here, as there is no other way to even obtain this in Generation 5. You could basically go into the Dream World and find the Icy Cave biome, then try to find yourself a Voltorb which would appear at level 10. So it would be pretty on par with the rest of your trainers if you went after beating the first gym. There aren't really many opponents that you'll match up well against. However, in regular black and white, you can at least take down Skyless fairly easy. And in black and white too, you also destroy Marlon's team. Electro doesn't really handle any other important battles well though, like rivals, evil teams, or even the Elite Four. But if you were to use it, it's still at least match up well against Skyla and Marlon. Going into X and Y, you can find Electrode in the Lost Hotel after you beat Lavera Gym, at around the late 30s. Not many important battles you'll really need this for at this point in the game. However, Electrode is fairly important against Seabold as he loses to it pretty easily. Electrode can still beat specific Pokemon on teams such as Olympia's Sigilith and Malvis Talonflame. However, it's a fairly neutral Pokemon overall. By this point in the game, you'll probably have Electro Ball when you catch it, so that will make Electrode have a really strong stab option for these opponents. Against rivals, you'll be fairly useless versus Serena if you choose Chespin, but otherwise, you can at least handle either her Vaporeon or Greninja. As for your other rivals, you match up really well against Tierno, but otherwise, you don't really handle Shauna or Trevor's teams here at all. Going into Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, you don't really have any new changes for Voltorb's viability in comparison to Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald. You gain access to it around Route 110 in these games, but it doesn't really change its strong matchups, since you'll still not really need it until Winona's Gym. And you won't really have any place for it against May or Brendan, even if they chose Mudkip, since it'll be evolved by this point anyway. Nothing substantial changes for Voltorb, other than a lot easier access to good attacks in this generation. But it's still fairly limited in terms of what it provides in any given matchup. Seeing as you can only obtain Electrode during the post game in both the Lola games, as well as the fact that it's just straight up unavailable in Sword and Shield, the final games we'll be talking about in this video will be Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee. You obtain Voltorb and Electrode much later in these games, since you can only obtain it in the power plant around level 37 to 42. You need Surf to get it here, which you can gain access to after beating Koga. So in these games, you only have access to it for Blaine, Giovanni, and the Elite Four. Luckily, you won't need to hunt for TMs since you'll have Thunderbolt right from the start, but it won't really help much versus Giovanni since he will defeat Electrode pretty much effortlessly. It shouldn't make much of a difference versus Blaine or most of the Elite Four. However, you can at least beat Lorelei pretty easily just like before, along with most of Lance's team since he's much more of a flying type user anyway. Otherwise, Electrode won't be much more useful here however, but you'll at least enjoy having it for your rival's ace being Mega Pidgeot, along with his Slowbro. At the very least in these games, unlike past Kanto adventures, there are some matchups that will get easier here. And for a fair bit of your journey, it's actually a usable Pokemon for once in Kanto. Well, that wraps up how strong Electrode was in game. I hope you all enjoyed it. But for the one who is here for basically every video asking for it, I hope you liked it the most. Sadly, Electrode isn't exactly great in any of these games, with its best showing being in Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald. But what do you guys think about Electrode's strength? Comment your thoughts down below, and let me know what Pokemon you'd like to see me discuss next. I'd definitely like to get this series going again, but I need you all to let me know you want me to continue it with those sweet, sweet likes and comments. So with that said, thank you to everyone for watching the video. Huge thanks to my phenomenal team and the amazing art done each week by Danny the Demon. I couldn't do all this without them. 
If y'all enjoyed the video and want to see more content like this, be sure to leave a like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Be sure to leave a comment too, as it really helps us out. I also do other content on my Twitch, where I stream Genshin Impact, Mystic Zora, where I do Pokemon Let's Plays and other gaming content, and of course Mystic Sage, where I do all anime content. Right now, I'm focusing on Inuyasha and Yashihime, so if you're interested in that, be sure to check it out. If you'd like to support me even further than that, check out my Patreon. Whether it's a dollar tip to get early thumbnail access, or the $10 tier to get cool perler bead charms and a shout out. There's tons of reasons to join today. These lovely people did, and I thank them all so much for their support. It really means the world to me. I think I'm gonna wrap this up though. I'm Mr. Gumbrian, and I will see you all next time with some more amazing Pokemon content.